12 false advertising scandals that cost some brands millions of dollars. It doesn't pay to deceive the public. In advertising, there's a big difference between pushing the truth and making false claims. Many companies have been caught out for peddling mediocre products using wild claims like scientifically proven with guaranteed results. For companies that cross the line, it can cost millions and lead to a damaged reputation. Here are 12 examples of false advertising scandals that have rocked big brands. Some are still ongoing and not all companies have had to pay up, but each dealt with a fair amount of negative publicity. Coming in at number one, Activia Yogurt said it had special bacterial ingredients. Ads for Danone's popular Activia brand yogurt landed the company with a class action settlement of $45 million in 2010, according to ABC News. The yogurts were marketed as being clinically and scientifically proven to boost your immune system and able to help to regulate digestion. The Activia ad campaign fronted by actress Jamie Lee Curtis claimed that the yogurt had special bacterial ingredients. As a result, the yogurt was sold at 30% higher prices than other similar products. However, the Cleveland judge overseeing the case said that these claims were unproven. The lawsuit against Danon began in 2008 when consumer Trish Wiener lodged a complaint. On top of the fine of $45 million, Danone was ordered to remove clinically and scientifically proven from its labels, according to ABC. Phrases similar to clinical studies show were deemed permissible. Danone denied any wrongdoing and claimed it settled the lawsuit to avoid the cost and distraction of litigation. Coming in at two, Red Bull said it could give you wings. Energy drink company Red Bull was sued in 2014 for its slogan, Red Bull gives you wings. The company settled the class action case by agreeing to pay out a maximum of $13 million, including $10 to every US consumer who had bought the drink since 2002. The tagline, which the company has used for nearly two decades, went alongside marketing claims that the caffeinated drink could improve a consumer's concentration and reaction speed. Began and Carithers was one of several consumers who brought the case against the Austrian drinks company. He said he was a regular consumer of Red Bull for 10 years, but that he had not developed wings or shown any signs of improved intellectual or physical abilities. Red Bull released this statement following the settlement. Red Bull settled the lawsuit to avoid the cost and distraction of litigation. However, Red Bull maintains that its marketing and labeling have always been truthful and accurate and denies any and all wrongdoing or liability. Coming in at number three, Tesco was criticized for an ad in response to the horse meat scandal, which suggested the problem affected the whole food industry. In 2013, UK supermarket chain Tesco was criticized after it ran a misleading ad campaign in the wake of its horse meat scandal, according to The Telegraph. The supermarket had been caught selling beef contaminated with horse meat in some of its burgers and ready meals. In an attempt to recover from the PR disaster, Tesco ran a two-page spread in national newspapers with the headline, What Burgers Have Taught Us. In the ad, Tesco was criticized for implying that the whole meat industry was implicated in the horse meat fiasco, which was untrue. The UK advertising regulator, ASA, banned the campaign. Nearly 300 million pounds, that's almost 432 million dollars, was wiped off the value of Tesco following the horse meat scandal, according to The Guardian. At number four, Kellogg said Rice Krispies could boost your immune system. Kellogg's popular Rice Krispies cereal had a crisis in 2010 when the brand was accused of misleading consumers about the product's immunity boosting properties, according to CNN. The Federal Trade Commission ordered Kellogg to halt all advertising that claimed that the cereal improved the child's immunity with 25% daily value of antioxidants and nutrients, vitamins A, B, C, and E stating the claims were dubious. The case was settled in 2011. Kellogg agreed to pay $2.5 million to affected consumers, as well as donating $2.5 million worth of Kellogg products to charity, according to Law 360. And straight in at number five, Kellogg again. Later, Kellogg said mini wheats could make you smarter. In 2013, Kellogg was in even more trouble. The company agreed to pay $4 million for false advertising claims it made about frosted mini-wheats. The cereal company had falsely claimed that the mini-wheats improved children's attentiveness, memory, and other cognitive functions. According to Associated Press, the ad campaign claimed that the breakfast cereal could improve a child's focus by nearly 20%. 
In its defense, Kellogg said that the ad campaign ran for four years previously and that it had since adjusted its claims about the cereal. Kellogg also noted that it has a long history of responsible advertising. People who consumed the cereal during the time the ad ran, which was during January 28, 2009 to October 1, 2009, were allowed to claim back $5 per box with a maximum of $15 per customer, according to Associated Press. Coming in at number 6, New Balance said its shoe could help wearers burn calories. New Balance was accused of false advertising in 2011 over a sneaker range that it claimed could help wearers burn calories, according to Reuters. Studies found that there were no health benefits from wearing the shoe. The toning sneaker claimed to use hidden brand technology and was advertised as calorie burners that activated the glutes, quads, hamstrings and calves. Plaintiffs in the lawsuit claimed to have been harmed and misled by the sneaker company. On August 20th, 2012, New Balance agreed to pay a settlement of $2.3 million, according to the Huffington Post. Coming in at number 7, Walmart falsely advertised the price of Coke in New York. Walmart agreed to pay more than $66,000 in fines after overcharging customers from 117 stores in New York for Coca-Cola. The supermarket chain had advertised a nationwide sale on the soft drink in 2014, where 12 packs would cost just $3. However, customers in New York State were charged $3.50. Walmart staff allegedly lied about the reason for the price hike, telling customers that New York has a sugar tax, according to Corporate Crime Reporter. New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, who conducted the investigation, concluded the price violated New York State's general business law, 349 and 350. Coming in at number 8, Definity Eye Cream retouched the model in an anti-aging ad. In 2009, an Olay ad for its Definity Eye Cream showed former model Twiggy looking wrinkle-free and a whole lot younger than her then 60 years. It turned out that the ads were retouched according to The Guardian. The British advertising regulator ASA banned the ad after Liberal Democrat lawmaker Joe Swinson gathered more than 700 complaints against it. The digitally altered spots were deemed to give a misleading impression of the effect the product could achieve. Olay's parent company Procter & Gamble responded that it was routine practice to use post-production techniques to correct poor lighting and other minor photographic deficiencies before publishing the final shots as part of an advertising campaign. Coming in at number 9, Splendor said it was made from sugar. The Sugar Association asked for an investigation into alternative sweetness Splendor's made from sugar slogan. It complained that the tagline was misleading and that the sweetener is nothing more than highly processed chemical compound made in a factory, CBS reported. In 2007, a resulting lawsuit led by the makers of rival sweetener Equal settled against Splendor. Equal was looking for $200 million from Splendor in the settlement for unfair profits. However, the exact amount of the settlement remains confidential according to NBC. Coming in at number 10, L'Oreal claimed its skincare products were clinically proven to boost genes. In 2014, cosmetics company L'Oreal was forced to admit that its Lancome Genefique and L'Oreal Paris Youth Code skincare products were not clinically proven to boost genes and give visibly younger skin in just seven days, as stated in its advertising. According to the FTC, the claims were false and unsubstantiated. In the settlement, L'Oréal USA was banned from making claims about anti-aging without competent and reliable scientific evidence substantiating such claims, the FTC said. Though L'Oreal escaped the fine at the time, each future violation of this agreement will cost the company up to $16,000. Coming in at number 11, Eclipse said its gum could kill germs. Eclipse gum claimed in its ads that its new ingredient, Magnolia Bark Extract, had germ-killing properties. A lawsuit brought by consumers alleged that the ads were misleading, according to Business Week. Wrigley denied wrongdoing, but was ordered to pay more than $6 million to a fund that would reimburse consumers up to $10 each for the misleading product in 2010. Coming in at number 12, a lawsuit alleged that Taco Bell was falsely advertising its beef. In 2011, consumers raised questions about what constituted Taco Bell's seasoned beef. According to the lawsuit reported in Ad Age, the seasoning used was oat filler. 
which means the meat isn't seasoned beef at all, according to USDA standards. The suit alleged that the franchise had been tricking its consumers into thinking its products were of higher grade than they actually were. Taco Bell took the opportunity to poke fun at itself, hoping to mitigate the PR disaster. The company even took a full-page newspaper ad out thanking complainants for suing. Taco Bell was vindicated and the lawsuit was withdrawn in April 2011, according to Associated Press. And finally, it isn't a piece of advertising, it's actually two books that I highly recommend. Now, Salt, Sugar, Fat and Fast Food Nations are two pieces of investigative reporting on the food industry. And it covers everything from how they make their food to how they advertise to us to how they try and cover up the downside of their foods, such as obesity, diabetes, their PR, the way they try and manipulate and lobby. All of that is just covered in these books. And it's quite shocking, it's quite sad, but it's a reality that we need to face. And once we know about it, then we're less likely to wanna give our money away to these companies. Because at the end of the day, it's a return on investment that's negative. So for example, if I buy, let's say a Big Mac, it might taste good on the spot, but then half an hour later, I'm not gonna feel too good. It's gonna be high in saturated fats, high in sugar, high in salt, it's gonna mess my body up, and then I'm gonna feel bloated, lethargic. Sometimes you can actually have a headache after eating these foods. And so the return on investment is negative. And also the fact that they hire scientists and food engineers to make these products extra palatable is, quite bizarre. So if you think about Pringles, you know, the crunch, the flavor, the smell, everything about the product is has been designed. And it's designed to make us extremely addicted to these products. And also they covered the marketing in these books. Now the marketing that these food companies use, I mean, you've seen in the examples that I showed you before, the marketing is just frightening because they know exactly at what hours to market they know exactly how to market and they know exactly what to show us to make us motivated to go out and buy them. And if we haven't got money to buy them, for example, let's say I'm a child, I'm a seven-year-old, they know exactly how to make that seven-year-old nag his parents until they give in and buy him the product or her. And then what happens to that child is that as the child grows up, that brand gets imprinted and embedded in the child's brain. So when the child becomes a teenager and then an adult, he's a buy for life because that brand is the number one brand that's embedded in the child's brain and then that child becomes an adult and then he will always seek out that product just think about it maybe you've been to the store and you wanted a specific product a specific brand that's what you had in mind and the store didn't have that specific brand and then you were kind of hesitant to maybe buy something else even though it was the same product it was just the branding that was more powerful now why is that and the reason is because they got us when we were young. So these two books, incredible, really insightful, quite alarming, but it's, it's good to have this source of knowledge because then we can make wiser decisions. And just like the previous examples, the 11 that I showed you, they're really insightful. And so hopefully this kind of is a game changer for you. It was a game changer for me. It has made my decisions a little bit more wise and it's really important because at the end of the day, we don't have infinite sources of money and when we spend it, we want to spend it right and we want to invest it right and preferably what we invest the money in will be good for us and for our health. So hopefully this video was helpful, insightful and if it was, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.